I'm Alex, and welcome to Safety Monitors. Hello, and welcome to the introduction to the Auto Ray 2 calibration system. We have the Mini Ray, our handheld PID cradle here, the Multi Ray cradle here, the Q Ray 3 cradle here, and um, the Toxi Ray Pro uh, cradle here. So, excuse me for the man down the alarm. Um, so the important thing to bear in mind with some of these cradles is they all function in a very similar way. Um, however, there are some adapters that are required. So in the Toxyray Pro derivative, we have installed in this particular device a clip-in, clip-out um, adapter. This happens to be for the Toxyray Pro derivative, so we can see that by um, the top mounting on the device that is a Toxyray Pro um, PID device. Um, but if you require the electrochemical sensor option, there is a round circular device that pops in here. Um, that will do the EC version or the LEL version or the CO2 version of the Toxyray Pro. Um, the Mini Ray or handheld cradle, which will also do Ultra Ray 3000s, has uh, this silver adapter here. So in order to provide, uh, to do a calibration with a Mini Ray, so we'll start something in this particular case, um, we need to remove the top probe from the device. So we happen to have a Mini Ray light here. Um, put that to one side and then to perform a uh, mini ray calibration um, we need to attach this onto the end of the device and that just gives us a nice tight connection on the mini ray cradle making sure we've got the opening towards us. Um, this unit can also do the ultra ray that's done in exactly the same way but with the probe we'll move to the top so we can use benzene for our calibration instead. So starting with the Toxy Ray Pro if we put that into communications mode, we scroll across until we see end communications and stop measurement, which we now need to do, yes, and communications mode is now ready. So we apply that to the dock and then fit it into position and the unit will now be recognised so we can see that on the main base station that this has now been recognised as a Toxyray Pro PID and is ready to form either a bump test or a calibration. So in this case, to perform, while we're sorting out the rest of the stuff, we'll perform a bump test on the Toxyray Pro and it's letting us know that a bump test has been requested on that device. Um, to get the Mini Ray into communications mode, we scroll across until we get to enter Auto Ray 2 and stop measurement. So not just in standard communications mode. Um, hit yes and it's now ready to communicate with the Auto Ray 2. Um, apply the device and this will now wake up the device and wake up the communications. Again in exactly the same procedure on the multi-ray. So scroll across until we get into communications mode. So we're now in enter communications mode. Yes, and now we select rather than enter PC or communications mode, we select the auto rate 2 and it's now preparing to communicate with the auto rate 2 device. The functionality is exactly the same on the QRay 3 device, so rather than going through all the all the particular devices and performing bump tests and calibrations on all of them. Um, so we can now see the bump and the calibration is available on the uh, mini ray light and um, multi-ray light unit. Um, this section will extend out further to accommodate the Ultra Ray 3000. Um, we happen to have a full gas mix and a 100 ppm of isobutylene on this particular dock. But you can have up to five separate gas camp concentrations in here. So, while I've been speaking, the bump test has now passed on the Toxyray Pro, so we can view the report on the device itself, or we can just exit. And now we can see these two units are also available and ready to do something with. So if we do a bump test on both of those, a bump has now been requested. We can bypass the wait period um, if we want to, so it will wait automatically for around 20 seconds before it starts the bump test, or we can manually get it to start now. And it will sequentially calibrate the instruments in device order um, and let us know which instrument has been selected first. So it will now presume, present the bump test and perform the bump test on the devices. And at the end of this, we will get a report to let us know whether it has passed or failed the bump test. If we wanted to from this point, we can automatically go into a calibration if it were to fail the bump test, or we can manually calibrate the device if it's over 180 days. And again, the functionality is exactly the same on the Q-Ray 3 part of the dock. 
There are multiple different gas configurations we can have for devices. So we can have CO2, we can have ammonia, chlorine, VOCs, benzene, any particular device um, concentrations you want. We just need to set these ports up either in ProRay Studio 2 or in the new Soterra software. Um, we have to have all our calibration docks um, linked up to our internal um, network. Um, so they're all Ethernet connected to our network, which means we can communicate with them anywhere within our facility. Um, all calibration logs are automatically then downloaded onto any machines that are connected to the network and have permissions to see the calibration docks and produce calibration reports. You can do this in exactly the same way. The thing to bear in mind with these devices is when they are bump testing or calibrating the device, they are just checking that they are uh, seeing what they expect to see. So when we perform a calibration, it is possible to get a false calibration, um, particularly with the handheld PIDs. So we can actually see both of these instruments have passed their bump test, so no further reaction is required. What I would always suggest in when performing a calibration with these devices is you follow that with a bump test. Now the reason I suggest that is because it is possible, because when we calibrate a device we're telling it how much of that gas we see, we've seen, or how much of the gas it should be expecting to see, if it actually sees a diminished um, result, it will then calibrate to that diminished result. Now the reason that might be the case is, especially with mini ray lights, is if you've got high humidity and you have some sort of uh, water ingress into the um, sensor block on the top of the device, the unit can see an inhibition of VOC data. Um, so it's not getting enough signal. So that might be indicative that you need either a new sense support or you may require some further service work to be done by a, a trained um, service centre. We're happy to pro provide full servicing requirements and that's one, one of the reasons we don't rely solely on the calibration docks when we're providing services and calibrations. We hope you found the information useful in this YouTube video, but should you require any further assistance or support, feel free to give us a call on 01489 326 031 or outside of normal office hours call us on 07 951 854 824. If you would like to find out any more information about the products or services you've seen in this video then feel free to visit our website at www.safetymonitors.co.uk. We look forward to speaking with you soon.